Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to 17.1 Launch Week and our fourth webinar of the week, new in 17.1, DevExtreme, presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell and DevExpress Web Program Manager Mahul Harry. FYI, this session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul and Julian. Thank you, Amanda. Welcome, Julian, how are you? I'm doing very well, thanks, doing very well. Kind of excited for this particular webinar. There's a lot to talk about, I know that much. So welcome, everybody. Let's hope you uh, learn something about what's new in 17.1. I mean, we have talked about it before, I'm sure, haven't we, Mihal? We have, but you know what, Julian? This is the fourth day this week we've had a webinar in a row. Has anything changed from yesterday to, day, to today? Well, absolutely. I think I tweeted about it, and then I wrote a blog post about it, and uh, it's out. Woohoo! Version 17.1 is now available for download from the download center. All you have to do is log in, select universal subscription or whichever subscription you have, and it will be there. And uh, But we don't want you to rush off yet. So hold off on that because you want to see what's available for you with the, all the HTML5 JavaScript stuff that Julian said, particularly this webinar. Uh, it's got a lot of exciting stuff. So what do we got in store, Julian? Well, uh, let's have a look. Uh, first of all is the actual release of our DevExtreme ASP.NET MVC controls. We've been talking about this for a, a little while now, what with uh, .NET Core and ASP.NET Core and our decision to create um, Razor support for uh, the MV, uh, sorry, Razor support for DevExtreme so that you can use it within Visual Studio. Uh, Treelist, I think you can talk about that one. Yep, for sure, it's a new controls. Exciting stuff in there. So well, why don't we just start off? So what's the story right. behind these? Why do we make a new set of MVC controls, Julian? We have this great set already. In essence, it's about um, compatibility. Let's, go, let's put it like that. Nowadays, web programming, whether we like it or not, is more about the client-side abilities of your application rather than the server-side abilities. Yet, here we are, .NET programmers to the core, and we like creating server apps. So what we've done with regard to DevExtreme and ASP.NET Core is to create MVC controls, which, if you like, wrap the DevExtreme widgets that we already know and love. So basically, in your MVC app, you can now create an MVC app where every feature of DevExtreme is, is present. And uh, Razor code syntax is there, uh, easy data binding, validation, and all that kind of stuff. We created a whole bunch of demos and so on and so forth. But does that mean that ASP.NET suite that we have, or the ASP.NET MVC suite that we have, is that out of date? Is it no longer required? No. Uh, as I said, if you're going to do modern web programming, I'd have to say you're going to have to concentrate a lot on the client side of things, and that's where DevExtreme comes in. Of course, there are a lot of uh, projects out there, a uh, lot of, um, I was going to say legacy, but that's uh, kind of got negative connotations, traditional applications where ASP.NET or ASP.NET MVC is just fine, works really well. And you really need, I don't know, the spreadsheet, for example, that we have. Yeah, it's not there in DevExtreme, and so on and so forth. So we are broadening, if you like, our ASP.NET offerings to include, if you like, another branch, which is very client-side oriented ASP.NET versus the very server-side oriented ASP.NET. Speed.net that we know and love up to now. Very well put, and uh, I I th I think choice 
as you said, Julian, it is an important thing on the web. Uh, I mean, how many ways can you make a website? There's what is there? There's like <laughs> Perl and Python and Ruby and uh, MVC and Razor. So clearly, web developers uh, find that there's no one answer that addresses everything. And so the, the question you have to ask yourself is, okay, what do I care more about? Do I care more about having sort of these uh, sort of client-centric controls or more, or do I need more powerful ASP.NET controls like the current ASP.NET suite uh, uh, puts out? And as Julian said, these aren't going away, Th these are gonna be here, but there are developers that prefer having this other approach. So. Uh, and as Julian mentioned, we made a ton of new demos, over 200 demos. Uh, of course, we had the Visual Studio integration. And so probably the only thing I'll say is that for a while, because, because they basically take the client-side controls and wrap them into these uh, server-side extensions. Where's that demo here? So for example, here, as you can see, this is an MVC extension. We have an HTML helper. And so you can use these, and we have examples on how to do data binding with them, uh, and we have documentation, as I just showed you. And for this release, we've also added a, a feature for Editor 4, which allows you to specify that says, hey, listen, when I need a text box, I want you to use the Dev Extreme text box versus the standard text box that comes out of the box. Because, again, Dev Extreme provides a lot of great features, validation being one of them. All right, um, again, if you are using DevExtreme now and you're curious, well, what about MVC? Then I highly recommend you take a look at these. We've been working on these for over a year and I'm happy to say they're fully released now. Go check them out. All right, Julian, next up, we've got a new widget for DevExtreme. It's a tree list. Now- Hang on, hang on, we've already got a tree list, don't we? That's a good question. <laughs> It's close. I'm you in there. <laughs> yeah, it's very close, actually. So uh, no, you you've called you called it out exactly right. All right. So what do what does DevExtreme have now? If I go and look for tree, and that's the new tree list. Typically, uh, we had what we call the tree view. Now, how do we differentiate the two? Well, basically, a tree view is non doesn't support general CRUD operations. So we say it's a navigation control. Right, so you typically find these on the left side panel. For example, this, this is a tree view, right? Because we're just using it to navigate around this website. It's not really meant to edit in place. And what we find, a tree list is generally more powerful and includes powerful features like editing. Now, what does that look like to you, Julian? Uh, it looks like a grid to me, uh, but with that first column having some kind of tree view, basically. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, and that's what we made the tree list with. We took <laughs> our grid, and, you know, we tried to reuse, right? I think you had some, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you had a bunch of videos on solid principles, you know, good programming, and one of them is reuse, right? So that's we, right. The team team did just that and said, let's just build off this excellent data grid control, which already supports great features like powerful data binding, uh, virtual scrolling, data editing, filtering, sorting, I can go on and on. But what's great is we got a lot out of the box. And then what we did was it really, it was a visual layout issue because with a tree view, I mean a tree list, you're displaying hierarchical layout, which means it's in a tree style. So as you can see, it's still got a very much a grid style layout, but it is using the, uh, uh, the, the hierarchical approach, which gives you the ability to expand, collapse nodes, as well as edit, as well as uh, add new rows or delete them. And again, there's a lot of great features that are built in, including that excellent search panel that also comes in. So if I wanna search for every ed in here, I can just type ed and it'll find me every ed instance in all of the different rows. So. Uh, it's available, and what's nice is that when we add something new to DevExtreme, because DevExtreme supports everything from jQuery to Angular 1 to Angular 2, and now the new ASP.NET MVC extensions, I mean the ASP.NET MVC controls, as well as the ASP.NET core controls, these the tree list is part of that as well. So they're available there as well. All right, exciting stuff. But what about the most popular control, Julian, the data grid? What's happening in uh, data grid land? 
Um, I wish I knew. You tell me. <laughs> well, uh, I... I... <laughs> Caught me out there. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. My, I'm answering questions in the background, so, oh, yeah, column resizing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, as you as you remember, the the feature actually exists in the ASP.NET Grid, right? And it's the ability to uh, resize columns in a way that allows you to say, okay, whether I want to resize the entire grid or just a column. And so this is really useful because let's take a look at the widget, widget resizing. Now, when I resize this, check this out. Whoa right like the entire widget is resizing now typically you will have the grid as the center main control on a page and so if you were to resize this you're going to get scroll bars on the bottom of the page and it's not going to be really nice uh, a thing whereas in let i mean if, let's say for example if you had a fixed layout or something like that where you didn't want to change the page size and that's where next column resizing mode comes in really handy because now I'm only resizing the current column. That means I'm resizing based on the next column, meaning the next column won't change out, but I, the, the column only changes itself. So that makes it super easy. Now, we've also updated a uh, uh, form. So we've added a pop-up editing form to the grid. Now, when I hit this edit, it brings up a modal dialog. So what's nice about this is, you know, like when you're doing row editing, it's fine. I like it just fine. But, you know, in row editing, I'm here I'm, and it's nice. I can tab over and I can make changes and that's great. You know, if I want like Excel style editing. But a pop-up edit form can help you if you've got a lot of fields or if you really want to draw attention. So here, because it's modal, I only have choice to look at it and everything is grayed out in the background, and I have to address, for example, uh, these fields. So now I can go through these fields, I can save my changes or cancel them, but it gives the user focus directly on this form. And so now it's available and it's uh, very easy to do. And as you can see, we've got examples in all of these different ways, the Angular versus ASP.NET, that you can see how to add that. All right. We've also, Julian, updated our UI widgets. Now, what do you think of when I say UI widgets? UI widgets? Uh, something fairly simple, something, you know, um, I don't know, uh, you caught me out again. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's exactly what I was hoping to do because yeah. I wanted to show you this new JavaScript uh, widget we've been working on. It's a drop-down box. Now. It sounds a little unusual, but what this drop-down box does, it actually allows you to embed. It's got a template, and templates, fantastic. Love templates, right? Because you can make, basically make your own custom appearance using the templates. But what's nice about this drop-down box is, previously, when you wanted to do something like this, you had to combine two different widgets, and it became kind of kludgy to embed in there and really do proper data binding. And so, in this release, we've got uh, this data, uh, this new drop-down box, and you can find it under our editors. And so this new widget basically says, listen, instead of having two different widgets, it's now one widget with a, a special template in there, and that template allows you to embed just about anything in there. So for example, if you take a look at the jQuery example here, I'll show you. So we've got the drop-down box widget, and in it, we've got the content template. Now the content template allows you to say, listen, I can put anything I want it there. Do I want a tree view? Sure. I can data bind it, I can add uh, custom events, all sorts of good stuff. And what's nice is, now when the user hits this drop down, they can use this as a selection. So here, of course, we've got the text box. And then when we want to change the selection, we hit this drop down and say, listen, let me go select uh, projector plus HD, and then we get that value uh, selected. And instead of a tree view, if you prefer to have a data grid, we can easily add a data grid in here as well. And what's nice is, again, we have the full features of the data grid available to us. So a small UI control with some big features as well as some uh, great possibilities because you know a drop-down box saves you space. It gives you the ability to really give you powerful functionality without taking up a lot of space because you're like, I want a grid, but I don't necessarily need it until they hit something for selection. 
So for example, you want them to find something with the word Tom in it. Well, the grid will do that for you. I can select that and it'll update it as well. Now we've done a couple of minor updates to a couple of other controls. The select box now lets you customize the icons. So I'm sorry, the, the drop down buttons uh, that are used as the icons. So for example, here we can see that the, we're using a special template to assign a special SVG image as this icon. And we can do this not just for the, uh, the drop down button and the items in the drop down button, but also, I'm sorry, for also the items in the drop down button here. So you can see for player, we've got a special icon. For uh, the TVs, we got a special icon. So it's a small visual feature, but it can have a big effect on the end users because, you know, a picture says a thousand words. And sometimes it's just easier to quickly go, oh, yeah, I'm looking for these TVs or these players. So once again, real nice feature of the select box. Now, I really like this next one. This one makes it very easy. It's, it's the ability to group items in the drop down. So for example, here, I'm, or I should say the select box. So here, as you can see, I, if I didn't have this grouping, and here I've got, so for example, grouped by what the, the category is, but if I just had the names of the products, I wouldn't know what Excel Remote IR is versus a Super Plasma 50. But because I've got the group header now, I can easily see, ah, those are TVs, those are video players, and these are automation products. And what's nice is you can even customize it with a custom group template so you can give it a special icon in the header as well as bold it or anything else you prefer. So, uh, and when you've got search enabled, it also lets you find something, let's say I'm looking for desktop and it'll uh, I minimize uh, the list to only my search criteria. Now, we've updated the functionality for the tag box as well. So in the same way that you saw the group box, you can have grouped items in the tag box as well. All right. Now, Julian, are you a fan of our <laughs> scheduler? I am indeed. Um, I like the way we do um, you know, presenting schedules, presenting appointments, and all that kind of good stuff. And it's um, it's pretty damn good i'd say and i remember i think it was either tuesday or wednesday you were talking um about some of the it was tuesday ah tuesday it was yeah. tuesday basic basically uh tuesday was the webinar on winforms and wpf and we were saying that a lot of our um interest if you like our concentration was on performance 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 as i said then and we've kind of adopted that approach across all of our products and here we're seeing it inside uh, dev extreme as well it's you know, we've got a really good scheduler let's make sure it's fast it works well with lots of data it you know um, it's highly performant well the team has heard you and they've taken it to heart because they as you can see sort of from this graph and you know, a couple of key things like updating appointments, deleting appointments, just by upgrading to 17.1, you're gonna see at least a 50% improvement or better based on the number of appointments. And what I'm really excited about is basically, you know, we did some rendering improvements where we were, so for example, if you were changing, if you were doing something like dragging or resizing an appointment, any action on a single appointment basically re-rendered all the appointments in the current view. And that didn't make sense to us. So we said, well, wait, wait, that's not smart. Let's only re-render uh, when specific things need to be re-rendered. And what I, what I really like about this is... <laughs> uh, you, you saying that just makes me um, you know, think ahead to what we're going to be discussing in a moment, and that's uh, React because that's the way React works. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to guess the team you know, took some ideas from React here. Uh, they, you know what? They all sit in this uh, startup style one big room they've got game tables and uh i'm surprised they get any work done I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no they, those guys work hard and i'm super proud because they really took it to heart as you can see here our scheduler is as good or better than anything out there how do we know we compare it you know we don't as, you, as julian you know we don't put our competitors and names out there but we yeah. do compare ourselves and uh, as you can see Dev, uh, our scheduler is right down here, for example, when we're creating a single appointment. And that's our goal, right? We want to be 
uh, one of the best libraries out there. Uh, and that also goes to talk about sort of the, the, the next big thing in, uh, in dev extreme plans. And uh, I suppose, well, well, we'll get to it, but let's, let's first talk, Julian. So what's up with Angular? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they're drinking over there in uh, Google land, but uh, wow. So we went from Angular 2. It was just <laughs> and then it be that became Angular JS when they brought out Angular 2, which um, was written in TypeScript. Um, and then Angular 3 seemed to, I don't know, fall by the wayside or something like that. So they went directly from 2 to 4. I'm I get confused. I... <laughs> I'm only a CTO. <laughs> I, I don't understand how people develop software at Google. <laughs> I think they took a page from Microsoft's playbook and they said, if Microsoft can skip Windows 9, we're going to skip oh, yeah. <laughs> Angular 3. I think, I think we should do that for next year. We're going to skip version 18 and just jump to version 19 in 2018. Yeah, that'll really confuse everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I guess it had something to do with packages and maintaining some ver There's a whole blog post, people, if you care. Uh, just know that you didn't miss anything, that the current version, well, basically, they, they do the whole Apple strategy of naming the iPhone. They don't, Apple doesn't say iPhone 5 or 6. They just say the I, Apple iPhone, whatever the current Apple iPhone happens to be. Right. Exactly, exactly. And so DevExtreme, if you're curious, and, and so we do a similar strategy here, when we say Angular, people are like, why don't you say Angular 1 and Angular 2? Because now it's going to be Angular 4. So we don't want to keep changing it because the t Angular team itself calls it Angular. So we're just maintaining the same strategy. But uh, as they have released it, and if you follow along with DevExtreme Angular, and you can follow along at GitHub DevExtreme-Angular, you can find, uh, well, you can find all sorts of great resources, but you can go to, for example, report issues and stuff. But let's say if you were curious, like what's happening with Angular 4 with DevExtreme? Well, you can do a search on it and you can find, for example, here that uh, one of our own devs, you know, back in March said, hey, listen, uh, we gotta be supporting Angular 4. And what's great is now that, you know, DevExtreme, uh, well, DevExtreme Angular has been on GitHub, but that it's on there, you can see all of the changes, all of the check-ins and pull requests, all of the refactoring, et cetera, et cetera, that was done to produce the first RC1 for our Angular 1, 4 support. And I'm happy to say that version 17.1 of DevExtreme will support Angular 4 uh, right out of the box. So. I do, I do like the fact that that pull request is number 404. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our Angular 4 support is not actually there. <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh, oh, too much, too much. <laughs> uh, hey, HTTP web humor is the best, right? We're, we're all web nerds here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, the NuGet. Now... What what's happened with NuGet, Julian? Why why are we talking about NuGet? NuGet, um, obviously, if you're using uh, Visual Studio, you're probably extremely familiar with it. Um, being able to download things like test suites and um, or test runners and and things like that. NuGet is a way of getting code onto your machine without having to install somebody's big installation program like. Um, Oh, Dev Expresses. So, what we've done is to give you a private NuGet feed. Look, look, we license our products. In other words, you pay us money and we give you a license to develop whatever you like with the product, and anything you make from that is entirely yours. But we need to be able to verify people's licenses. So what we've done is to have a preview of a private NuGet. And it, in other words, you bought the license, you have um, a license to use our product. Here it is on a private NuGet where you can just you know, go to some other Visual Studio, install it through Ooh. NuGet uh, directly into that particular project and move on. Exactly, and uh, so it was highly requested for by uh, a few customers that, and I and I get it. NuGet makes you know it's a package management, and if you've got like a build process and you you want to use it, so the reason we're talking about NuGet in this 
particular webinar is because we have exposed those DevExtreme MVC controls as part of NuGet. Now, DevExtreme uh, MVC controls, uh, I, I guess, Julian, maybe you can tell them the good news, um, <laughs> that they are available as part of, uh, of course, DevExtreme, but they're also part of the uh, HP.NET subscription. So can you talk a little bit about that, Julian? Indeed. Going right back to the beginning of this particular webinar when we were talking about MVC controls and being able to use DevExtreme widgets from within your uh, new MVC application, it became fairly obvious that either we have several different varieties of ASP.NET suite or we just make one and we just made one. So now DevExtreme is part of the ASP.NET suite uh, with uh, DevExpress. And uh, what it basically gives you is if you buy um, the ASP.NET suite to, or the experience or universal, you will get uh, DevExtreme as part of that suite. Uh, and then you can use the uh, the MVC controls uh, directly in your application from Visual Studio. Yes, and, and that's excellent news. Uh, so for example, uh, if you have any questions about it, you can click this live chat button and you will get help from our excellent folks on chat. Um, so uh, I, just to mention, the reason I brought it up and I, I really wanted Julian to address this is because these are uh, specifically uh, you know, private, meaning that these are not, uh, we're not exposing the MVC out on GitHub or anything like that. And uh, again, uh, because it's a .NET product, because these are yep. server-side uh, controls, right? They are wrapping the client-side functionality, but they are truly ASP.NET controls. And therefore, we just thought it made sense because they're really for ASP.NET. But as we saw from the ASP webinar on Monday, a lot of folks, a lot of devs are, are well aware and uh, you know we think that both products, the ASP.NET product and DevExtreme products, offer a tremendous value for uh, what you're doing. And if you want to get your hands on it, uh, I can put a link to this. But basically, uh, there's a whole knowledge base article, and uh, this is a fake key, so don't worry about it. But basically, you will have. Oh, a... I was just copying that one down. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to get this tattooed. I, I think it's worth it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, it's, this is your private key. It, it's only applicable to your subscription. And so, for example, sometimes people have asked us and say, hey, what about Dashboard? Well, as Julian just said, if you don't have the universal package, which is where Dashboard exists, then you won't see this. So you're only going to see those packages in your, in your Visual Studio NuGet private repository that you have access to on devexpress.com. And so uh, it makes life great and easy. And if you have a build process, you will love NuGet. Okay, Julian, yep. this brings us to uh, the big news. Uh, <clears throat> What's happening, so, sir? The big news is in the past, DevExtreme has been a purchasable product. In other words, you come to us, you say, I'd like to buy DevExtreme. I have five developers. I need five licenses. Boom, here's my credit card, and we move on. Now, what we found is that works great to a certain extent, but if you realize that DevExtreme is, you know, it's JavaScript. It's just a big old JavaScript library. And what we were finding is a lot of people are used to writing JavaScript. They're used to open source JavaScript. They're used to going to GitHub and then downloading um, some library or other, say, Angular 4 uh, from GitHub. And they were basically asking, customers were asking, you know, it'd be really nice if DevExtreme, being a JavaScript library, was available on GitHub. And we could, if we wanted to, um, you know, provide pull requests. Um, we could clone it. We could, you know, fix things. And so what we've done is DevExtreme is now available as two types of license. The first type of license is, if you like, our traditional uh, purchase license, and that is for commercial software. 
So in other words, by buying DevExtreme, you not only get a life, um, you know, you not only get the source code, but you also get a license to create your own commercial apps that you then sell on or give to your customers or whatever it may be. And as part of the purchase, you get some extras like support, um, that being the biggest one, and so on and so forth. But there is now also a non-commercial license. Now, the non-commercial license is very bare bones. It basically allows you to clone or fork or um, download um, DevExtreme from GitHub, and you can use it to create you know, non-commercial apps. So, hey, you've got a blog and you need some you know, nifty UI on that blog. Hey, DevExtreme's there for you. Just uh, clone it from GitHub, use it in your blog, and no one is going to jump down your throat at it. <laughs> um, but if you're, you know, you're creating a website for, oh, I don't know, yeah, let's say Wells Fargo and... Um, you want to do some fab UI within that wellsfargo.com, then it becomes a commercial enterprise and you need the um, original uh, purchase license. So we've now provided DevExtreme, uh, the bare bones, the, bare, the basics of DevExtreme. Um, you were showing a, um, 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 a bullet list of what's available in commercial versus non-commercial. And um, you can go to GitHub, you can clone the repository and you get the widgets you get the single page application uh, framework and um, you, you, know, you get charting and all that kind of stuff and that's that's pretty much it so you don't get the priority support you don't get well you don't get any support at all um, you don't get the NVC controls that those are part of the commercial uh, or as we've got here, DevExtreme Complete. Um, you don't get the theme builder, you don't get the wizards and designers of Visual Studio, and so on and so forth. So if you're, I don't know, you're teaching a class at the local community college, and you're teaching people JavaScript, and you want to say, here's a nice little UI library, let's use it to create some example UIs that uh, you will then go out as web programmers once you get your um, your your degree or whatever you can go out and you know charge money for and so on and so forth so that's basically it commercial by the license non-commercial clone from github of course you know you can buy a license and then clone from github that's uh, you know, nothing to stop you there and what we're hoping is through github we're hoping that people will not only report bugs but also you know have a bash at fixing them issue pull requests you know participate in the growth of dev extreme across the whole broad you know expanse of commercial versus non-commercial well said sir so let me simply add that as julian mentioned you know any respectable modern javascript library is on github mainly because and this is the sort of the odd thing about github you know, GitHub, you, you actually don't see ads on GitHub or anything like that, but it's just the place, as we all know, where, you know, the Angular team decided to do it. As you see, Microsoft has put a lot of their stuff on there. So, honestly, we want more people out there to know how excellent, as you all know, how excellent DevExtreme library is. I mean, how, you know, we actually have some of the best Angular integration. You know, how do I know? People come and talk to me. I was just at Build last week and people were like, oh yeah, I love your Angular integration, you know? And as, uh, as we'll talk about React in a minute, you'll see that we do things to try to make sure we approach them in the proper way. Meaning that sometimes we pay a cost <laughs> in terms of more time and developer hours and stuff, but it tends to work out better. So what's nice about GitHub for you, the end user, it's, you know, as Julian mentioned, yes, you know, there is sort of this new licensing model, but, and I'll talk about it in just a sec, but the main thing here is that, you know, being on GitHub is nice because most likely many of you are already aware, aware of GitHub and how to use it. 
and uh, as Julie mentioned, you could, it's very easy to clone this. We actually gonna have lots of guides. You can do, we got several packages, Bower, NPM, NuGet. Uh, you can download the installer or a simple zip archive. We have all sorts of things, but what's nice is, just like you saw with the DevExtreme Angular, you can, uh, you can report issues. Now, here's the thing, uh, and this is sort of what I wanna make a differentiation on. If you, uh, you will need a license, as Julie mentioned. So you are not, you are actually, doing way better because 99% of the cases out there for powerful UI widgets that DevExtreme provides you are likely going to be used in a commercial scenario. However, and like Julian said, if you guys are, you know, saying, hey, listen, my, you know, local, uh, you know, whatever company, whatever it is, uh, you know, we don't make any money. Uh, so it's not, you know, uh, it's not a commercial endeavor and we are not, go whatever we make is not going to compete with DevExtreme. Hey, then you can use it for free. Now, granted, as Julian said, you are not going to get certain things out of the box like the MVC controls, the theme builder, any of the Visual Studio integration and more, especially specifically the, pro the support. Support is not included. That doesn't mean we won't answer questions. We want you to report bugs. We just want you to, you shouldn't have an expectation that, okay, I reported this bug, why didn't they fix it? Versus if you had a support license, guess what? You will get that addressed. And if there's something serious, we'll have a hot fix out the next day, all the things that you come to expect. All right, with that said, uh, I do want you right now, or actually right after this webinar, to go, and I'll have links for this, don't worry, and there'll be a blog post after this webinar, but go here, and do two things. One is to click the star. The star lets the community know, listen, this is an excellent project, I'm a fan of it, uh, you know, I, I like it. And more specifically, hit watch. Now, do not worry, when you click watch, you're not gonna be, you're not signing up for newsletters, we don't get your emails, none of that. All watch does is that when we do some kind of push out to GitHub, you know, let's say, uh, one of the things uh, that we plan to do with GitHub is we'll be able to do what we call pre-release builds. So for example, the team internally works in a very agile, two-week sprint type of way. So when they first had the tree list, they said, oh, we'd love to get a little feedback on this feature. Well, we can now, when we, now that we're on GitHub, have a pre-release build through the packages, and what, me, what that means is the pre-releases, of course, do not come with any support. But for those early users who want to get at and say, let me see how this looks, let me see how this plays well, or I want the feature to work in a certain way, you have that ability to give us that direct feedback through GitHub. And so that's really what we're hoping is that you get involved. And the best way to do that is to keep uh, watch on. So of course you'll get updates on issues you submit, but you won't get inundated with emails. And uh, it's really, really, uh, it's a big move. The, the team had to do a lot in terms of making sure we got uh, the code ready. And I'm happy to say, you know, all the work that's been happening in the DevExtreme last year from like getting Webpack support to this year, getting it ready for GitHub. And we've got more uh, plans in the works that uh, you'll see later on this year. So exciting, exciting stuff for DevExtreme. All right, Julian, let, tell me what, what what is this React thing all about? <laughs> React. <laughs> oh, boy. So Google created Angular, and Facebook, in their uh, wisdom, created something called React. Basically, both are a way of creating a UI on the client side. Now, the really interesting thing about React for me um, which is why I've basically uh, never really got into Angular at all. React requires your JavaScript to ignore the DOM. In other words, the DOM is out of bounds for you. And what happens with React is it creates this um, virtual DOM uh, or hidden DOM or um, whatever you like to call it. It creates something that it maintains itself and when something changes in that shadow dom it updates the real dom in the browser so the great thing about this is react comes with this fascinating diff engine um, it will compare what's the the real dom looks like to the, sorry start again it'll compare its version of the shadow dom with the one that you've just changed and it'll identify those individual pieces of HTML that you've changed 
and just update those in the real DOM. And re hence the whole thing, React. It reacts to the changes you make and well, updates the UI. And of course, that means things are a lot faster. It doesn't have to download a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't have to refresh the whole or re-render the whole window. It just renders the things that have changed. And that, in a nutshell, is React. Now, the interesting thing about React is you have to basically give up everything that you ever knew about updating the DOM, really. And it, it maintains its own state for all your components. And so we originally were thinking, you know, we've got a great data grid in DevExtreme. Um, Mihul showed you, you know, the changes we've made to for the tree list, you know, just making the first column uh, a kind of tree-like structure. But, you know, why can't we just wrap that in some way for React? And the answer is the original data grid modifies the DOM ad nauseam or ad infinitum and that does not work with a framework like React where React is expecting to be the the thing if you like that the engine that is going to re-render just the bits that have changed. In essence we'd be saying every time we make a change to the grid we're going to say to React oh the grid has changed the whole thing please re-render me and that would just be so slow so we've gone and written um, YAG yet another grid <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> hey I, I like grids and I cannot lie <laughs> yeah no absolutely Okay, so let me let me just simply add on to that and what you said was, uh, first, you're right. And, and you know, Julian, uh, I think you and I, we should do a React webinar where we walk people through sort of React 101 and then how to add right. our widgets because there is a lot there. There's a lot there to digest because if you don't know, you know, what they mean by declarative or even component-based, uh, there's a lot of good stuff in React. You know, they, they, there's the whole stateful uh, management thing with Redux and all this kind of good stuff. What What is useful, what's important to know, people have been asking us, because ever since React came out a uh, year or two years ago, whenever, people said, hey, this React thing, it looks really cool. And then they went and made, uh, you know, uh, all, all these other libraries out there. So customers said, guys, I love React. Uh, you know, because there, there's a whole camp between Angular and React, and listen, w whichever holy war you want to get into, that's up to you. But again, I, we, we think React is great. We're excited about it as well, as we are about Angular, and we want to basically show the world out there that DevExtreme can make your life better. And as Julian said, we could have easily, and we could have saved ourselves a lot of headaches and just made a, uh, our, our, taken our a current DevExtreme data grid and provided as a wrapper, but we didn't do that. Sometimes wrappers are great, like they are for the MVC controls. But in this case, we made a native control because of React's specific architecture we want to take advantage of, uh, certain things React does with the virtual DOM and stuff, but also it was based on your feedback. Because when we asked, you said, no, 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 please, we'd like to make have the best grid. And as you're gonna see in just a sec, it is the, one of the best grids. In fact, let's just let me just show you what this grid looks like, it's fantastic. So the the first thing to note is React. Uh, our, it, it's, they're gonna be called the DevExtreme Reactive Components. And we're starting with a grid. So, so far you've probably just seen uh, one blog post where I've talked about, hey, there's a, a new grid coming, it's called the DevExtreme React Grid for Bootstrap and Material UI. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But take a look at these demos, and these demos are linked from the GitHub page. And again, I have links to all of this stuff, so don't worry about going there now. But it is what we call business components for React. These are powerful controls that you don't typically get, because there's lots of free editors and text boxes out there already for React, and we're not gonna try to compete with those. What we wanna make is stuff that you're gonna find valuable, like a grid and so forth. So, so far, we've just worked on the grid, and check this out. So let me first start in general. The grid looks fantastic. It's got sort of the base bootstrap look to it right here, right? We've got the rounded corners. But check this out. When I click something, it, it, it's very quick. It's updating, it's using sort of the React internals. And that's because 
when the team made this, they had studied all the best practices from the React team, all the tips and tricks, and, and incorporated those in there. So not only is it probably perhaps one of the best grids out there for React, it's got all the smarts built into it. And we added the kind of features you look for. So for example, of course, we've got editing in there because you can't have a grid without editing. And then of course, we've got things like sorting, uh, filtering, and of course, integration with uh, uh, technologies like Redux. So if you want Redux to manage state, it can do that, or the grid can manage state. And we'll talk more about that in the future. And of course, things like support for remote data. Now, what's really awesome is how performant this grid is. So check this out. Here's 200,000 records, and the grid's virtual scrolling. I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to scroll down. Look at this. There's virtually no lag here, and it's fantastic. So. Once again, I'm sure for those of you who are using React, you, you are probably itching to get at this. Well, go for it, but I should warn you that this is in CTP mode, which means it's a preview and we're not finished with it. We have more plans for it. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you are free to use it. Uh, if you do release, know that you may not get support from us, but we want you to try it and give us your feedback. We want you to tell us. So what's special about this Devon Screen Green besides that performance metric that I told you about? I mean, we did a lot of work to look at performance and the DOM and how it works and all that. What's nice about it, it's got this composable and extensible architecture. And again, we'll, Julian and I will plan a webinar, we'll talk about this stuff in the future, but it's really cool. And uh, it's really interesting, but this plugin based architecture makes it very extensible, and, and which means it's easy for you to upgrade it. And also, we, uh, for theming, we didn't actually use uh, the theming, for example, from DevExtreme or anything. Instead, we said, let's do this. You know, in order to save time, because we're writing a whole new library, and while this is what we call under the DevExtreme brand, uh, you know, the DevExtreme reactive components are under DevExtreme. As you can see, they weren't written with the DevExtreme library. So while it's a new library, they are they're akin to the same license. And again, they won't be currently part of the install, so you'll have to get them from the GitHub page. But what we want you to do is, you know, and if you're using React, you're likely getting everything from GitHub anyways. But what we did for theming is we supported two popular libraries, the DevExtreme React library. I'm um, the DevExtreme, sorry, not DevExtreme, the React Bootstrap library, which is a set of Bootstrap 3 components. So what you get out of this is not only can you use nearly any Bootstrap 3 theme out there, but you can also play nicely with these components. Now these are simple components, and again, we were like, Mahul, why are you talking about components that are not yours? Because these only provide you simple things like editors and so forth. And we said, you know what? Our customers, they want us to provide a little more. Now, that's not to say in the future we may not have more, but for now, we just wanted you to, to say, here's what's available, use our powerful grid. Now, not just Bootstrap, but we've also supported this other popular library that's based on Google's Material UI, and that's the React components for uh, Google's material design. And again, this also similarly provides a set of simple components that you can use with it. Now, uh, I think we're still working on the material UI at the moment, but it's coming very soon. Now, what I showed you today, this is all public as of yesterday, meaning it's out there in the world. So you can see them by going to github.com slash devexpress slash devextreme reactive. Uh, anything else you want to say about uh, React, Julian? Um, no, I think I think we've we've covered most of it. Um, I just want to emphasize that um, the nature of React means that um, it required a rewrite of the grid. I mean, after all, if you're creating a React application, what you do is you basically write it the very smallest bit of HTML you can, which is a div, and then you point React at that div and say go for it, render here, and that's it. I mean, that's all the HTML you ever write. And then you have, you know, fun things like JSX to, to get over, and you're writing HTML inside your JavaScript and, and all that kind of fun stuff. But, you know, your HTML page just consists of one div, essentially. It's, it's a great, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm bowled over with React. I think it's um, a fabulous uh, library and a fabulous framework. It's... Uh, it's uh, much better than Angular, in my view. But then, you know, 
<laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And again, you know, there are cases where I, you know, I've heard it said that if you, for example, have a very large, you know, project that in some ways Angular has some advantages with, you know, their mm -hmm. TypeScript but integration and all that kind of great stuff that you can do. Because, you know, TypeScript is great as well. We've covered that in a bunch of webinars in the past with that you can write tests for and so forth. But yeah, I mean, I you know, and a lot of times people say, yeah, but React has sort of a simpler approach and, uh, you know, everything is just a view or something like that. So again, we could talk about it in a webinar in the future. For now, it's up to you to decide. What's nice is we have uh, uh, support for both. At the moment, we only have one control for the Rea DevExtreme Reactive components, and that is the grid. Uh, but based on your feedback, for example, if you come in here and say, hey, issue, create a new suggestion that says, hey, please implement the so-and-so component that you have in DevExtreme. I would really, really love to use that. Tell us you know, your use case scenario and top three features you'd like to see out of that. That really helps us and the team figure out what customers want, what they're doing, and helps us plan better. So let us know. It's all based on your feedback. I mean, especially uh, in the open uh, here on GitHub and stuff, you can see exactly what we're working on. You know, you, you'll see our check-ins. You'll, you can suggest, uh, uh, you know, with a pull request and so forth. All right, I know this wasn't on the list, Julian, but let me just quickly make one last uh, feature. Uh, we've done some minor updates for charts. For those of you who are using our visualization library, we fixed some things like overlapping access labels. Um, for example, we've fixed uh, pies with equal sizes. Because you know what, Julian? I believe everybody should have an equal size of the pie. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and finally, you can now- You're here all week, and uh, especially at the weekend, <laughs> I, I need Magic. the I need the drum. Ta -da. So yeah, exactly. And finally, you can color each bar differently. Uh, they're very minor features. For those of you who love our visualization charts, you'll be happy to know. Based on your feedback, we've implemented these things. And now, my favorite part, Julian, we can talk about the Q and A. Some great questions have been coming in. Shall we talk a little bit about those? Sure thing. I mean, the team have been answering. Here, um, these questions as we've been talking, as we've been presenting. So, uh, I don't know whether you noticed any that uh, we should talk about here. Yeah, um, uh, sure. Uh, so, <laughs> somebody agrees with you. React. Uh, some people are really big React fans. Uh, fair really? enough. Uh, so, I'll put I'll put these uh, links up. And again, there will be a follow up blog post which you, you can find. So, the first link is the What's New. If you ever want to know the latest What's New with DevExpress, just go to devexpress.com/new, and that'll take you to the current What's New. In this case, it's 17.1. And then, of course, our GitHub presence stuff, the uh, DevExtreme Angular. And to reiterate. Yes, there's, you know, the new license and, you know, uh, so even if you have the commercial license, we welcome you to GitHub. Go there, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, suggest uh, code back to us, fixes back to us, you can, you can talk to us there and uh, we welcome your feedback. And if you have an issue, go to devexpress.com support because, again, you know, it is a paid library. There's, you know, real developers behind this and real support, and we want to be able to per continue providing that for you. And so that model helps us do that. Now, uh, that said, tell your friends. GitHub is out there and tell, send them a link. Say, hey, listen, are you making a nonprofit, non commercial, uh, I'm sorry, non commercial, non competitive uh, website? Use DevExtreme. And here's the best part I mean, unlike some of our competitors, we put every UI widget out there. I mean, that's bold, guys, right? Not not like the core set of small editors. I'm talking like the grid, the scheduler. You know, we, we didn't we didn't half do it. We it, this is full on out there. And then, of course, if you are curious about the licensing, then uh, as Julian likes to do, you know, read those uh, contracts with the lawyers and stuff. He can tell you all about what's possible and what not possible. No, seriously, Julian's well versed in our licensing, uh, ah, ah. <laughs> as we make him Gee. do. <laughs> CTO and lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you're uh, you're married to a lawyer, so uh, you have an advantage yeah. there. But yeah, exactly. uh, and now, 
Uh, the github.com uh, reactive components are available. I put this link if you're not curious about the React stuff and if you want to just play with it, it's out there. Okay, that said, uh, I th you're right. I think I don't, I don't see somebody's asking about some specific questions. That's fine. But if you have any general questions, and oh, here, Julian, let's ask this. There was a question that says, I joined late, seems extensive. Did I miss any discussion on Xamarin? And uh, <laughs> while this is not the thing for it, could you just quickly, in like 90 seconds or so, tell them our plans, you know, how we do okay. things the right way with, for Xamarin? So uh, what we did um, probably about a year ago or something like that, I was in the past sometime, we produced a grid, oh look, another grid, uh, for Xamarin Forms. And in producing this grid, uh, we made it available for free to everybody. And in producing this, we noticed there were several issues which were, shall we say, problematic. Uh, one of them was the extensibility of uh, Xamarin Forms at the time, and the other one was performance and we've been talking about performance a little bit during this webinar and in other webinars and it's i would say one of the big things that we're paying attention to in this release and in future releases and that's performance and we felt that xamarin forms wasn't yet ready and then microsoft bought xamarin so during that time we thought to ourselves the only way to get performant controls for a Xamarin app would be to write some native infrastructure. In other words, we'd have to write some Objective-C or Swift for iOS to provide some kind of um, uh, capabilities that uh, Xamarin Forms does not provide. And we'd have to do exactly the same thing in Java for Android. And that's the plan that we have at the moment, is continuing with that dual work of writing some kind of infrastructure um, so we don't have to use Xamarin Forms um, so that we can then provide some kind of Xamarin components uh, which you can then use with you know, C Sharp and VB. And um, that's a long process because we have to write the same code twice in two different languages, essentially. But we learned a lesson, right? That came from experience of knowing uh, feedback from yeah. customers and all that good stuff. So again, mm -hmm. it goes back to feedback. So, uh, and let me let me just address one thing. I see a couple of questions related to this, where people go, "Can I use Dev Extreme with MVC, or can I use the NuGet through MVC?" And you know what? I mean, yes, we have. If you're using, if you're asking, like, "Can I use a client side library within ASP.NET MVC?" Yes, I mean, the view in MVC can embed just about anything. And somebody said, can I put React in there? Yeah, you can. My general uh, approach would be to say, listen, if you're using a client-side library, consider using it uh, alone, and then use uh, you know, ASP.MVC for the server portion for like Web API or something like that to serve the data. And uh, we've had webinars about this in the past, but if you are curious about sort of some of these different approaches, uh, let us know. Maybe we can do a webinar on it and discuss it as well. Um, all right, Julian, so we're, we're coming up on that mark, and uh, why don't we hand it back to Amanda. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I'm super excited. More than anything, please contact us and let us know what you think. I kid you not, this team wants to hear from you. Our team is very anxious and curious. So if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know. We're okay with all feedback because we want this to be the best library out there. So uh, re reach us out on Twitter if you have specific questions for Julian or I. Our emails are here as well. And then follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. All right, Amanda, let me hand it back. Uh, Julian, thank you very much for breaking all that complicated stuff down for us. <laughs> and thank you, Mahal, for introducing all those new enhancements and features. And thank you all for joining us. Amanda? Hey, guys. Thank you. Exciting stuff for 17.1. All right, everybody. We have one launch webinar left, um, and it's tomorrow, and it is uh, Dashboards, Data Analytics, and it's again with uh, Julian and Paul Usher, and that's tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m., Pacific Standard Time. And also, all of our Launch Week webinars have been posted to our YouTube channel, so you can catch up 
or rewatch at your own convenience. And of course, today's webinar will also be available on our DevExpress YouTube channel. I will post the link in the chat box. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Julian and Mahul. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.